We got snow up in Wisconsin and in Minnesota, but down here in Chicago, Illinois, the flowers are starting to bloom, and that means one thing, Jim. Coho salmon are in. We've got our rods. We're uh, going to throw some spoons, but we're also going to talk to a friend of ours about a very unique, very Chicago method of fishing. Yeah, uh, power lining is something that I've never experienced before. I don't know if the viewers at home have tried it, but it looks explosive, if you will, and I can't wait to try it. It is trot lining on steroids. It's a very unique, very Chicago way of fishing, and I'm really looking forward to learning more about it. Well, hey, instead of talking about it, let's go put some salmon on the concrete. Let's do it. We're here with Florin Delano, and he's going to walk us through the uh, the entire power lining setup. So, Florin, you know, what what do we have going on here? Okay, so power line is just a modified uh, trot line. Mm -hmm. So we're launching the weight using uh, CO2. Right. Okay. This is pretty dangerous looking. Yeah. Well, it's if you know what you're doing, is not really. I mean, it's just a fire extinguisher. And, and that's really the thing about power lining is it's all hand built. You're not walking into a shop and buying this rig. Actually, you can buy the, the setups now. A few bait shops will sell you the setups. A few setup. of the local ones? Yes. What you cannot buy is the fire extinguisher. Right. They, they won't be selling that. That's regulated, okay. I think. So, so you can buy the rig, but the launching apparatus itself is a yeah. DIY. It is. You can buy the tank, but you'll have to, to modify the tank. So basically, we have the weight okay. and we have the rubber line. In my case, I'm using uh, 3 16 Okay, that just looks like a rubber band. I have, I think, about 75 or 80 feet of a rubber line. Okay. So I will have to lay down on the pier, and then when I launch it, that rubber is going to go flying. And, and I would say 300 yards, maybe, is going to land. I don't think you'll be able to see it when it lands. Not, gonna... not even with nanofill are you going to be able <laughs> no. to cast 300 no, yards. No, no, no. So the weight goes in. Okay, just like you're loading a cannon yeah. or a muzzle loader. Okay, so we have a half a rod here, and what are we doing with that? We're going to launch the weight with the rubber, and we attach the rubber to this line because it's going to go flying. Okay. You cannot put the hooks now. because Right. Gonna... Yeah, you tear everything yeah. off. So this is the potato gun that everybody wished they could have built when yes. they were a kid. This, yeah. this ain't no toy, people. <laughs> you will see. So we ready? All right, let's see how this works. Woo! We, we wish we could cast that far. What you'd be able to do if you could cast that far, you'd be able to cover so much water. But it, it is truly incredible, especially for shore anglers, you know? Right. Because you don't have the means to fish that area. Absolutely not. Th this is... This is something else. Yeah. So this is the actual power line. Yes. To be clear, folks, we are in Illinois. We're trot lining and power lining um, is 100% legal. So I, I know some of you are cringing about it, but uh, um, it's... Yes, in water, not restricted by the two line and pole right. regulations, you can have up to 50 hooks. So we got the rubber and now we attach the power line to it. So now you use the tension in the rubber band to pull the trot line out and as it's pulling out, you're, you bait the you're line. baiting the hooks. We want to keep the bait about four to six feet under. Okay. That's the target zone for coho. Right. And we do that by using some floats. Yeah, and that's the, the great thing about the leading edge of fishing is all the DIY stuff that's out there. You see, I'm using an old uh, golf cart. We've seen rigs that are built um, right on the back of a bike. We've, uh, we've seen modified strollers, modified wagons. Just a bucket, you fill it with water and that's right. it. You take your end of the line okay. and you connect it to a pull line. So then we attach it to a bell. Okay. So I have one of those uh, buzzers. Okay. okay. And this is a micro switch. So when it bites, you hear this. Sometimes that's all it takes. This is absolutely impressive. There you go. There, there we go. Fish. fish on? Yes, fish on. Fish on. There you go. You can see it jumping. Yeah, jumping wow. All right, I'll crank if you want to fight the fish. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll feed with you. If you jump like that and it's still there, then it's hooked up good. Right. It's not too far, though. Oh, look at that. Looks like a steelhead. And that's how it's done. Yep. So we got ourselves a little coho here. Perfect griller size. As long as it's over 10 inches, perfectly legal. Look, there's another, you have a fish on your line. Oh, we got a fish down here. There you go. 
probably a school of them coming by. Okay, so now as Florin has told me, now what we have to do is start walking this out. Look at this, my first power-lined salmon. We have a beautiful, I'd say about a pound, pound and a half coho salmon, and I'm really looking forward to this one for dinner. So we've had a really good time out here on the lakefront, Jim. I don't know why we brought the rods, because the power lines definitely outfished us. Uh, Florin, thank you so much for uh, showing us the rig and uh, letting us jump in with you. If somebody wants to learn more about power lining, how could they go about doing it? We have a Facebook group called Chicago Power Line and uh, Lakefront Fishing. Hey, I'm Dennis Lapel for Jim O'Neill and uh, Florin DeLiano. Yes. Midwest Outdoors will be right back. <laughs>